Density, very important concept in chemistry. Density of gases, lots of neat demonstrations you can do. And here's one I want to share with you right now. What I've got is a mylar balloon. That's what these are called, these metallic balloons. Um, and it's filled, not quite all the way, with helium. And you can see that, although the helium part, whoop, is that close? It's really close to being neutrally buoyant. I'm going to add a bit of paper towel, even that's too much there. Weight it down a bit. I'm trying to make something that's, there we go, a little more dense than air, okay? So, notice that I let some of the helium out. I'll show you in a second how I made this before I do the demonstration. So it's a little bit more dense than air. I'm going to hook this up right here just so it doesn't drift away. When you get the balloon from the store, by the way, it's nice and taut like that. How do I just let a little bit out? Well, you could cut this open, but then you have the problem, how do you reseal it? It turns out this isn't really even sealed. The way these Mylar balloons work, there's a little sleeve that runs up right inside there. That's what they put over the little helium tank when they fill it up. It pumps the air up in there. That sleeve, by the way, runs into the balloon about halfway. They pump the helium in there, and it's the pressure of the helium pushing that sleeve shut behind it that keeps the helium from leaking out. It's a very ingenious thing. So that means if you have one of these that starts to deflate, you can just, just put some more helium in it and repressurize it. But it also means that to get some of the helium out, the easiest way is to take a piece of, this is actually the little plastic tubing that comes with the smaller helium balloons. Glass works, but it sticks a bit going in, so I like plastic tubing better, rigid plastic tubing. If I just slip that up inside that hole there, that, show that to the camera. Let me do it here first and I'll show it to the camera. Okay. You just slide up in there and watch what happens as it gets past a certain point. I got past the end of the sleeve. I can now squeeze out some of the helium like that, pull it back out, and it seals itself afterward. So that's about how much you want to leave out, just enough so it doesn't look too filled up. Then you just make a little gondola basket out of a styrofoam cup, and then you have to add enough paper towel to it to make it just barely sink, okay? So that's how you can let the helium out of the, uh, of the balloon, okay? So what's this good for? Whoop. We've got a system here that just barely sinks, a little bit more dense than air. And I've got a camping stove here that I'm gonna light. Now, <laughs> this is important, guys. I am gonna place this balloon up here. Now, it feels just warm. Okay? Not at all. I'm not putting in the flame at all. Right here, I can hold my hand there. I can certainly hold this helium balloon there. So, here we go. And as soon as I put it there, what do you notice happening? It expands. Look at that. Looks like I just pumped some more helium in there, but of course I didn't. And now, it takes off. Okay. Oh my gosh, how am I going to get that down? And think about that. <laughs> well, of course, what goes up must come down as it takes some time to cool. And it depends on how high a ceiling you have. If you do this in a large gymnasium, it'll go all the way up to the top. But eventually, notice it comes back down on its own. <laughs> okay? Right back to where it was, ready to be used again. Now, I like to do this demonstration through a second time. I'm being followed by my other balloon here. And the second time, I ask the students this, this very important question. What's happening to the mass of this balloon as I heat it up? And you get three very different answers. Okay, I'm here heating it up. They see it getting bigger. And some students say, oh, the mass is increasing. It's getting more massive, dude, getting bigger. Well, no. Others saying, what are you saying? It's getting more mass. The mass is going down. You just saw it lift off. It's obviously getting lighter. Both those are actually incorrect. I like the second one better than the first. <laughs> But the correct answer, of course, is the mass is staying constant. Think about it. No atoms are entering or leaving the system. If the mass comes from the atoms, it's the only place it comes from, the mass is staying constant. The volume is what's increasing. And because density equals mass over volume, when the volume gets bigger, the density gets smaller, and of course, it lifts off. Okay? So, a nice little reusable, easy to reset demonstration for, I call it the Mylar hot air balloon. Now I have a little PowerPoint that's going to go along with that that shows that, it's going to come down again in a second,
but we'll focus on this PowerPoint. Okay? I didn't know what kind of a mylar balloon I'd have, so I drew a little smiley face on it. And remember that at first I let out some of the uh, helium so it's not quite round and puffed out. So I've drawn that as an oval there. And um, it was more dense, so it obviously sank. But keep in mind that that balloon was filled with helium atoms. And it's important to realize those helium atoms were not just sitting still like that. They're in constant random motion. And then you remember what I do. I heat it up. So here's my flame heating up the balloon. And of course, what would that flame do to the movement of those molecules, those helium atoms? Of course, it would make them speed up even faster. That means that they're pushing even harder on the walls of that balloon. So that balloon would expand, and you saw it do that. Okay? And then it lifted off. Okay? Then once it got up there, of course, it was, the flame was taken away. There was no more heaping at it, so they slowed down. Now they're not hitting the sides of the balloon as hard. So really, it's the outside pressure that pushes the walls back in again. And it, of course, sinks back down. Wonderful little demonstration of density, the effect of temperature on molecular motion, and it's uh, one that the students definitely remember. Thank you.